and the state opening of Parliament is complete. The Queen's speech has been delivered, and the legislative framework for the coming ye- well coming year traditionally has been laid out. It's very very hard to imagine any any um, uh, change to that tradition in this context, given given the current political climate, and, and more pertinently, of course, given the, the arithmetic in Parliament. So nine weeks since the last one, probably around 52 until the next one. Probably 18 months. So we'll probably go to May. We'll go to we'll go probably to May uh, 2021 before uh, the next one. We didn't have a Queen's speech for more than two years um, when Theresa May was Prime Minister after that general election. We then have now had two within the space of... Uh, nine weeks, um, but this one with more detail um, outlining Boris Johnson's Conservative uh, manifesto. Top of it was delivering Brexit by January the 31st. The withdrawal agreement uh, bill uh, is going to be published this afternoon and then debated and voted on at second reading uh, tomorrow. And the idea from Boris Johnson and from the government is that that signals that that legislation can pass through the House of Commons. They don't want to uh, give any um, indication that they're dilly-dallying, they're wasting time um, and the MPs will get the legislation moving and then they'll, they'll come back for the first week of January, we'll go through the House of Commons, then through the House of Lords and then we're waiting on approval from the European uh, Parliament. Any um, surprises? Uh, there was... Let's, I, I've done this sort of in my head, sorry okay, James, no, chronologically take, take through time. my... Of course. Um, so, proposals for social care, interesting that they inserted that into the Queen's speech, of course Boris Johnson ducked um, that question during the uh, election campaign because uh, he talked about, well, let's have a conversation about how we're going to deal with the social care crisis. Why is it that so many elderly people um, have to rely on just 15-minute uh, wait visits into their homes a couple of times a day uh, if they're lucky? How do we fund it? Theresa May said, well, let's let's fund it by people s- selling off their houses, then had to U-turn Boris Johnson rather than finding another proposal which would come from either higher borrowing or tax um, increase or a mechanism like Theresa May came up with just to duck that question but has included the fact that there'll be uh, a review or a commission to try and find a solution uh, to that problem. We've got the Australian po- Australian style points-based immigration system. Did he say that phrase? No, the Queen didn't say that no. phrase. She said um, modern fair points-based immigration um, system. Do we know what that means yet? N- detail? No. No. Okay, no. watch this space. <laughs> So that's going to come out. They've only been ushering the phrase for four or five years. Surely, surely they could have come up with a detailed description of it by now, no? Well, the way points-based immigration systems work is that if you have a shortage in a particular sector, you reduce the number of points that are needed in order for somebody to get a visa to come and work in one particular country, and therefore it is easier for people to come work in that particular sector. And, and, and you can balance out the needs of the economy versus uh, maintaining controls on your, immigra- on your, on your border system. Um, and so if there is a shortage in the number of nurses, for example, say they can't find the extra 31,000 nurses that they need, you could reduce the number of points you would need to come into this country to work as a nurse. The, the, the um, potential problem with it is that you can only ask people to come. You, yeah, they don't necessarily want to. You, you, can't, to. you can't force them to come. No. And if there were to be a massive downturn in the number of people coming here to be nurses, um, it, it, as there has been, yes. the, the, the idea that by saying, because you're currently still welcome, yes, because we still have freedom of movement, but yes. they've not availed themselves of it. So to turn around and say, well, we still haven't got freedom of movement, but you can still come. Yes. It's an interesting political but, 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 but I think in the mindset of governments gone by... The mindset has always been, the, the starting point has always been that the United Kingdom is an attractive country to come and live and work, and therefore people automatically want to come here, and you need to put up barriers to prevent them coming here to work. Yes. And that's the starting point. Now, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong, I'm just saying that's where the thinking where it behind is, the thinking it. Uh, behind it. Um, the government um, will invest in infrastructure while maintain, whilst maintaining borrowing. Which is just also something that often gets overlooked is that Australia's per capita immigrant population is exceeded only by Switzerland and, and Luxembourg among OECD countries. About 28.2% of the entire population in, in, in Australia is immigrant born. So quite why that phrase Australian style has become so popular among racists is, is beyond me. But there we are. <laughs> Government will invest in infrastructure whilst maintaining borrowing is kept under control. Um, That relates pertinently to uh, HS2. Will Boris Johnson go back on uh, HS2? He didn't give a firm answer. Some days during the election campaign, he was for 
the high speed rail project in the north of England. On other days, he didn't seem to be that keen on it. When he came on LBC, he talked it down, saying, Well, the cost is going to go north of 100 billion pounds. Of course, many people in the north of England want that because they want to invest and uh, bring jobs and economic growth to the north of England. Be a question mark still over what um, that means. Um, tax credits for research and development, business rate reform. Um, of course, business rates has been uh, a huge uh, problem. Well, it was a problem for um, Theresa May's uh, government, um, and it'll be and this morning government now Boris, under Boris Johnson committing to reducing business rates so that the high street is more equitable, faces um, a more equitable um, uh, arrangement compared to large out of town warehouses which ship goods uh, around the country but face comparatively. Uh, s- lower business rates. Um, so Boris Johnson there wanting to signal that he is on the side of uh, small uh, businesses. Um, and then that new Constitution Commission mm. that we talked about and what that means for the future of the uh, Supreme Court and whether he decides, with that commission, decides to politicise the highest court in the land. So, th- I mean, that was business as usual then. I and mean, there's a lot there, but, it's, but, but, it, but there's no detail. You wouldn't traditionally expect detail in the Queen's speech. Well, you don't get the detail. What you'd have we're, and what we're going to get in the new year is much more detail about what the government's actually proposing because you're going to have a vote on the Queen's speech and that's when the detail is going to come out and you potentially have amendments. In, years, in the last Queen's speech, those amendments became problematic because, of course, Boris Johnson didn't have a majority, so he couldn't get his Queen's speech through the House of uh, Commons. And, of course, you rely on... A government relies on getting a Queen's speech through the House of Commons in order to have the confidence um, part of being able to form a government, and this time it will sail through. But that will come in January, probably in the second week of January, after the withdrawal agreement uh, bill, that piece of uh, legislation. The withdrawal agreement, of course, the first line of the yes. speech, my government's priority is to deliver the UK's departure from the EU on the 31st of January. Can you remember what the first line was nine weeks ago in the last Queen's speech? Same thing, wasn't it? My government's priority has always been to secure the United Kingdom's departure from the European Union on the 31st of October. Although, for the record, this time... I, I, it wasn't a complete copy and paste. Found, no, no, they have to change the dates. <laughs> but it will, this time it will happen.